Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Showtime Nerds podcast. My name is Nova. I'm here with my wonderful host, Grimo. Yo, yo, yo. And today we're going to talk about an anxiety movie, Black Phone, directed by Scott Dickerson. You might know him from Sinister and especially from Doctor Strange. And this movie was pretty interesting. Can I, can I say that, Grim? Uh, yeah, it was it was like super interesting. I'm usually not a big fan of horror because usually they're not actually scary. But this one actually gave me a little bit of a, a big thriller. Like I was frustrated at the same time and feeling other emotions. Amazing. A quick intro to the movie. This movie was really inspired by a short story by the same name by Joe Hill. This follows a child named Finney Shaw. He's a shy, clever 13-year-old actually being held caught hostage in a soundproof basement by a sadistic mass killer played by Ethan Hawke. And when he sees a phone disconnected from the wall, he starts hearing the voice of the previous victims of this murder. And not only that, we also see the perspective of his sister Gwen, who is having these recurring dreams trying to help the police and trying to help her own brother throughout this case. This movie was supposed to be released last year, However, this movie is going to be released this Friday. So the real question I have for you, Grim, was is this movie really worth it? I say it's definitely worth it. Um, Obviously, we watched it through a screening, but if you have the money and the time, definitely give this movie a watch. It is 100% worth it. It's not crazy gory, but there is some gore. So, you know, be careful for that if you don't like gore. But other than that... It is amazing. It keeps you on your toes. It makes you frustrated, but at the same time, happy with the characters. Ethan Hawke did an amazing job. Like, I mean, amazing. And so did the other actors, of course. They all did wonderfully. It's very diverse, and the whole movie itself is just well done. I gotta continue what Grim said. It is definitely worth it. Every single mile that me and Grim took to watch this screening was amazing yeah we gotta also say thank you to universal and amc for help holding this screening for us it was perfect it was an exciting moment and i gotta say not only ethan hawk the children in this movie played amazing these roles and that's the first thing we want to get into the characters So the first one we want to talk about was Finney. With Finney, as a 13-year-old being clever, I would say he had a lot of growth within this film. Because to be honest, they could have made him a simple, innocent child, no backstory at all, and we could have had a small sympathy for him. But they took that extra mile, giving his, his backstory of a bad past with a drunken father, an absent mother, and not only that, he's getting bullied at school. And now he just got kidnapped by the Snatcher played by Ethan Hawke. Yeah, uh, Finney, Finney does have an amazing character arc because at the beginning we see him to be very brittle, very fragile. And as the movie progressed, we see him wanting to escape that show but not actually doing it. And towards the end, we basically have a whole new character. Finney grew in ways that you couldn't even imagine and... That was well written. The people involved with this movie did that so well. Yeah, we gotta say, it's something interesting with with character, and especially as a kid actor trying to grow throughout that film, that's unusual to see with some kid actors. And this, this actor really took it to the next level and made us really support and cheer for this man. Yeah, honestly, um, I... Forgot to look up who was the actor for Finney, but you did phenomenal. That is great job. We can't wait to see you grow in the movie entertainment and keep up doing the good work. His name is Mason Thimes. Thimes? Yo, Mason Thimes. That was beautiful. I would say he, he is one of the amazing actors in, in this movie, but another one was Ethan Hawke's character. Ethan Hawke's character was pretty good as a was the grabber. To be honest, every time I saw him on the screen, he was unpredictable. You literally had no idea when he's going to show up, how is he going to show up. It reminded me, at some parts, as some of a, another type of a Joker, just giving that unpredictable vibe of it being 
that sadistic type. And not only that, we also see him throughout different masks. Like, there's sometimes he comes out with a smiling mask, a frowning mask. Uh, maybe he comes in with half his mask, just the bomb or just the horns. It really tells you what type of persona we're going to get from him. Yeah, with um, he was a perfect agent of chaos. This man, we there was a scene where you thought he was gonna appear, but he didn't. There was so many scenes where you wanted the character to hurry faster, and right when you think yeah, um, the grabber's gonna appear, nothing, and it, it just gives you that that whole anxious and frustrated feeling, which is good because as a thriller and horror film, you need that. And Ethan Hawke did an amazing job at giving the different sides of the character. You start to see that as he's wearing different masks, he has almost a different demeanor. And that was awesome acting by Ethan Hawke's. Definitely, definitely. But someone I really think sold the show, and I think this was the most surprising for me, was the sister Gwen. Yeah, the sister fucking, oh my god, I loved her. I, I think this is the most curse word I've seen from a child actor since it. Like, I don't think we haven't seen a child actor really curse as much as Gwen did. In this. <laughs> and some, some, sometimes, like, it was not even for comedic effect. It, it was for really a dramatic scene. Uh, pretty sure it was when she was like, F you, Christ. And, and it was it made everybody laugh. And I don't think it was supposed to, but it was just a perfect moment. Yeah, and not only, she felt like a like a little grown up because a lot of her dialogue and a lot of her demeanor was already more grown which is completely realistic because she is a victim of uh, domestic abuse with her drunk father and usually with kids that they go through all these um abuse and mental changes they become more grown than they're supposed to and we saw that with her her level of maturity was insane her like dialogue was amazing and the way the actress herself portrayed that character was done so well yes yeah, i got to also say that she really drives the connection she has with her brother you really see how strong and compassionate they are to each other to really root for them both. Yeah, yeah, honestly, they did freaking great. But other than, you know, Gwen, the Grabber, and Finny, we have some of the side characters, like the friends of Finny or some of the bullies. Yeah, and they, I think they did pretty amazing with that small, like, I guess, storyline with, with them. Not only showing us how the phone works... And basically, how they're trying to help him throughout these small quests. So, little, very, well, big spoiler part right here. So, if you need to take a quick skip, please do so. But, um, the whole thing, the whole premise of the movie is that both Gwen and Finney have these almost um, abnormal abilities of being able to communicate with the dead. And the black phone is actually... Finney's ability to communicate with the people that died by the grabber previously. And it was just all done so amazingly. Yeah, and don't forget, the the grabber also has this ability too, because they said, the, the children say that he hears the phone as well. Yeah, but, but he, he ignores it, to, yeah. He, he ignores it until the last scene where, where he actually hears them. It's almost like he's trying to like hide his guilt until the end when he realizes he can't escape it. Yeah, I think that was good story story from them. And not only that, they actually made like I think that was just a, a director's touch where it just looks like his old previous film was like Sinister. The children look like the kids from Sinister. The old film that the sister has of her dreams, like some like old film, old movie type thing. It just looks directly from Sinister, and that's just his director's touch, I would say, as well. Yeah, yeah. That that felt honestly, it was just all beautifully done. Now I really want to get to your experience because this was our first screening together. Yeah, and I want to see how you feel once we got in there. How was the movie? And really. Let's talk about the audience there, too, because I think that's the first time I saw an audience cheering, excited from a horror movie. Yeah, well, and, 
um let's let's get to it because i have so much to say since this is like pure you took away my v card in uh <laughs> in early screenings but um first things first yes, yes. i, I want to give a shout out to valor uh well, we went there and we were super early, so there was nobody. So we went to get food and we came back and the line was packed. But Valor, obviously, she she took us in. She was like, hey, no worries. You And we told her about the podcast. She instantly subscribed and um, followed our Instagram and YouTube. She was nothing but amazing. So I obviously want to give her a big shout out for just helping us get back in line and be back to where we were supposed to and just being so heartwarming she was amazing but yes she was the experience was crazy because we were in new york we were doing all these stuff while we waited because it was super empty and we had to wait uh, like two hours so um we went around we did some awesome stuff i i visit new york frequently so it was you know it was like me giving lewis a thor a uh, whoa a tour but um the line itself was insane i feel like you know there should have been something done better with that because the whole line was outside of the theater and it was insane they should have tried to put us somewhere inside the building while we waited because just waiting outside and there was homeless people that peed on the wall there were just crazy stuff happening and that could have been all managed better um other than that once we get inside we were treated awesomely they obviously checked our tickets they looked to see if we had anything you know suspicious we didn't we went inside everybody was so like heartwarming and having fun and they were having their times and it was just it was you know that that new york vibe you you heard the new yorkers saying they shit and it was fucking hilarious and obviously there was this well, not obviously, but there was this one moment where a girl tried to skip the line over everybody, and this dude got heated. It was well understood, but other than that, I felt like I was at home with the people. I felt like everybody was having fun. I was having fun. When we were watching the movie itself, everybody was um, enjoying it. You heard all the reactions. You heard laughter, screams, frustration. You heard people like, no, don't do that. That's some white people shit. Everybody laughing. Everybody <laughs> like screaming. It was... That's how you know you did a movie well done when you hear the entire audience change in perspective every second. Now, I do want to add a commentary. And the first things first, Lewis and I were very disappointed that Ethan Hawke did not appear in the screening. We were hyping him up. That, that is true. Because that is true. Lewis, um, Lewis encountered Miss Marvel or Brie Larson um, in one of his screenings. And so... This time, he was telling me, oh, maybe we'll see Ethan Hawke, especially since this is New York. A lot of actors come to this movie, and we, you know, it's exciting. I was like, oh, man, if I see him, boy, oh, if I see him, I'm going to tell him a thing or two because I need his help. But um, <clears throat> but it was still fun, nevertheless. Um, the people there was amazing. There was this uh, girl that worked with Universal and she did the data collection and stuff and she was super nice. She also wanted to hear the feedback. She was really nice about the feedback and all that. So shout out to her. But the experience itself, it was something great. It almost felt like I met a new community that I've never met before. Usually with online communities or different type of um, fandoms, there's some toxicity. But here I thought it was very welcoming and everybody just wanted to watch a new movie and have fun yeah i got to say the same thing honestly this is the first time i ever saw like an excited crowd that was always cheering so hu humble you really feel the i guess feelings throughout the movie i, I never felt that since like an mcu film or like one of those big superhero films films it really felt like that environment and like grim said everybody was so friendly everybody was so humbling they were able to like take care of us. It was the best experience I ever had in a screening. And like you said, Ethan Hawke should have showed up. He <laughs> didn't. I was crying inside. <laughs> um, I was really thinking about lowering my grade for this film, but this movie was too good to lower it. But Ethan Hawke would have made this ten times better to see him. Yeah, yeah, because we we want to see the man that that played such an amazing role like the grabber once you watch the movie you'll understand what the grabber means and it's just yes. it, his fucking thing was amazing his acting i do want to get back to the film where 
what was your favorite moment of this movie? Um, it's a mixture of a few. The, my favorite moment would be how everything technically connected towards the end. So every person that called gave him, uh, gave Finney a clue on how to escape. Um, they told them make a hole here. They told them do this. Uh, they told them um, open this uh, vent. Open this. Uh, try to p pull this. And so towards the end, once the grabber is gonna have his final moment with Finney, we see everything fall in line. We see the first hole that he did be useful. We see how the vent is useful. We see how um, the meat that the vent took you to is useful. We see how the cult that almost got him killed is useful. Every single thing in the movie is extremely helpful because it it helped Finney in the end. And I think that's amazing. I like it when when movie franchises do a connection, sort of how the, uh, how the MCU had at the beginning, how, for example, um, Now You See Me also had that connection for its uh, movies. So I, I love that whole everything needs a purpose and everything makes sense. So all those scenes combined until the end were my favorite. Continue you know what you said. I love the ending. I like how they all connected it. Especially what you said with the hole with the meat when you try to open up the the hole in the wall and he enter a freezer when he got the dirt dirt from that wall and and from the hole where he just puts in the phone and tries to be up be up the grabber with it. But the best moment for me was really when he finally gets reconnected with his sister. I think that brought a big emotional moment for me. Like damn, they fought so hard to just get back to each other and they really got got there. Yeah, and I, I think what's crazy about that scene is just how the sister's like dying of anxiety and you see it in her face. She's going crazy because they found um, the grave of the other children, but they didn't find Finney. And she's going crazy in her mind, but then she looks forward and the first thing she sees is Finney. And she's she goes crazy. You see her in her face, the relief and the need to reconnect, which again, the actors did amazing for that. And it was just beautiful. It was very beautifully done. It was an amazing moment. Now let's get into our ratings for this film. I gotta say that for me, this is the best experience I had in a movie. Especially for a horror movie. Because I haven't seen a good one probably since The Conjuring. And for me, I just gotta give it a 10 out of 10. It has the expense that we all wanted. It wasn't full with jump scares. But those jump scares really got you. And that sense and feeling from like the old movie of Sinister, having that old film, and those kids looking creepy was amazing for me. And Ethan Hawke really stole the show with one of his best acting skills and really brought up the grabber to be a really icon, I, I would say now. I think I could put him up with the Michael Myers, the Freddy Kruegers, to be fully honest. i just give it out 10 out of 10. What do you think, Grim? I 100% agree. Um, I could definitely see the grabber in a game like Dead by Daylight, you know, being one of the villains because he did so wonderfully. Uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not a big fan of horrors. I usually don't get scared easily or most of the time. But for this one, I wouldn't count the horror as a big part. I would count the frustration. I did. I found myself a lot just like grabbing my goatee and like pulling my hairs and almost like touching my forehead because i want finney to survive from the connection that they gave me with finney so i think that with all the other emotions that it made me feel it did wonderfully i honestly felt some sort of tension and some sort of frustration and this need for finney to survive that it shows that it is a wonderfully done horror i do remember though um a lot of like in the in the what's it called in the like the the scares i remember hearing the people go like ah and then i'm just sitting there with my hand on my goatee <laughs> just staring at the screen like oh shit what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen next because i was just too excited and th i think that's the best part i didn't need to be afraid in order to love this film i think that's the best part too because it really gives you that suspense with it because there's some moments where we really thought Ethan Hawke is going to show up and can't get the kid while he's doing this. Yeah. And Ethan Hawke doesn't show up. But in the moments that we don't think he show up, shows up, he does. Yeah. So it's, it really gives you that question. It's like, 
when is he popping up and gives you that thought throughout the movie as well yeah they they did the opposite of what people are used to they you know we have these moments where we instantly know like a, a jump scare is gonna happen and we shut off but when he does appear it's at the most randomest moments you could ever think of yes and, and that's one of the best moments too one of the things i really th thought was good was that when he said oh that's some white people stuff yeah you know, when he was going up the stairs yeah that and was hilarious the kid really that's the moment we thought we're gonna get the full out madness of Ethan Hawke, but you, we should see the kid go back downstairs and, and close the door. Yeah, he was that, smart. That's the per I think that's the perfect way to divert our expectations and really get really settled in for that film. Do you really think this might need a sequel? Because I really think that this movie is good enough as a standalone film, it's going to be good in the box office if people really do out go out to see it. I do, please do go watch this movie. For me, I don't feel this is uh, needed for a sequel. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of a fan of movies that have like a copycat in the future. For example, um, like the Zodiac copycat and stuff like that, where there's um this murder trying to imitate crimes. So if they do you know, want to make a sequel, I feel like that's what it should be. It should be someone that heard of the crime and it's trying to repeat it, but not make it the exact same. Make it its own little thing. You see that. I can see that. But it has to have this director. Yes, I, that's yeah, only, definitely. There, there's no other way that this sequel could ever happen if the director's not involved. But, yeah, because you oh, need those connections oh, from the first one. Of course. Hopefully, there could be a sequel, but... 100%, this should be a good box office revenue for them. I would like to say thank you to, uh, once again to Universal and AMC for holding the screening for us and us watching it a little bit earlier. Watch this movie on June 24th on Friday. Uh, most likely, I'm going to watch it again. I'm not sure about Grimm, but please do watch it. Thank you for watching. I'm Nova, and I'm with Grimmo. Yo, Have a good yo, day. Yo. Good night and a good day, everybody.